Welcome to the fourth in the NASA 32 series. In the previous three videos, what we've done is set up the board with the basic configuration so that you can do some simple hovering and flying. Then in the second video, we spent some time doing some more of the advanced configuration and things like ESC calibration. And in the third video, we added a minimum OSD on-screen display to the board. And in this one, we're going to add this little sonar device to the bottom of the craft and wire it up to the NASA 32. Now this board here is actually a HC-SR04. You can get them from loads of different places, eBay, Hobby King, all the usual suspects. And um, it's a relatively inexpensive piece of kit. It's only a handful of pounds, a couple of dollars, um, and it's a relatively simple device with four pins on the back, which is plus five volts, ground, echo, and trigger. Now, there's a couple of ways you can plug this into the board, and we'll get onto that in a little while. But first of all, let me explain what sonar is and how it works. In my opinion, sonar is probably one of the less interesting modifications that you can do to your NASA 32 craft. It's a little bit of a gimmick and something that you can try and play with, but in my experience, it doesn't work particularly well unless you're flying over some very solid surfaces. So let's talk about what the sonar actually does, and um, we can go into the details of how we're going to fit it to the craft, then we'll look at how we configure it does seem to have a lot of problems where over time it will drift and lose height and it won't stay absolutely rock solid. So if you're expecting it to stay you know, within a centimetre of the height it's at when you trigger sonar mode, that is not what you are going to get. It is going to provide some help and support, um, but only for a certain height. Because what it's actually doing is bouncing sound waves off whatever's underneath the craft, it's better if it's a nice, solid, reflective surface. Something like concrete or stone or tarmac. If you are flying over things that are, that tend to absorb um, sound, so things like cardboard boxes and stuff like that, it doesn't work anywhere as well. And it's only useful up to about three meters. Um, depends on the conditions, but sometimes a little bit less, sometimes potentially slightly more. But it means that you know, you're know you only looking at um, controlling the height of the craft uh, around a story building in height. So it's not something that you're going to use to help keep it in position 100 feet in the sky. This is something that you would use in maybe a car park or on a, um, a tarmac playing area or something like that. It'll work really well in those places. If you are in sonar mode and you go above three meters, the craft should drop back into standard altitude mode, altitude hold mode anyway. So um, even if you are in sonar and you flick it into sonar at 100 feet, it's not going to do anything. Point to note, these modules vary in quality a lot because they are so inexpensive. The amount of quality control and effort that goes into making sure they're absolutely solid isn't maybe where it should be. So I've heard of people having um, three or four of these in a batch and only finding that one or two do a good job. The others cause an excessive amount of wandering around that can't be fixed by editing the PIDs. So just keep that in mind. Because they are so cheap, you know, it may be an idea if you're going to order one, it's because they're so cheap is to order two or three more and you can try and find one that will work perfectly for you. Last couple of warnings and gotchas. It only works when the craft is level because what it's doing is firing a pulse of sound down to the ground and then listening for the echo, the reflection of that sound from the surface. Um, if you start to tilt the craft excessively, then um, it doesn't work as well because the sound, one, is going farther because it's going either to the side, back, front or whatever, but also the reflection is coming back slightly weaker as well. So if you're going to be flying really fast and have the craft banked over and trying use sonar, you're going to struggle. And of course, the last thing is you can't land in sonar mode. Uh, always have another mode like stabilize or something else that you can flick into to land the vehicle. Okay, with that said, let's have a quick look at how it actually works. So here's um, kind of a side view of a nice solid area. It has a lump in the middle. The craft is below three meters 
as we fly over the terrain in sonar mode, then what will happen is it will actually match the height of the ground that it's flying over and work to try and maintain that height all the way along. And that's basically what sonar does. So the first thing we need to do is we need to wire this thing up to the NAS A32. And uh, there are two ways that we can do this. If you're using pulse width modulation, which is the standard cable that comes with it, where you have a separate uh, cable for throttle, elevator, aileron, rudder, auxiliaries, one, two, three, four, etc., then you will need to plug them into um, motors five and six as per this diagram. So echo will go to motor six, trigger will go to motor five. You'll find on the module that the pins are very clearly labeled, which is good. Um, nice thing about this is it's dead easy if you already have a quadcopter, you're not using M5 and M6. This is a very easy way to put it together. There's no additional cabling or soldering to be done. You can wire this up literally in a matter of moments. The second way to do it, if you're using PPM, which I am on my model, um, PPM is where you use one three pin servo cable to get all of the control lines coming in from your receiver. There are a lot of other pins, the other 10 pins um, of the receiver connection are actually available. So now what we can do is we can actually plug the trigger and echo into two of those spare pins. This is the way, if you're going to run a hexcopter, you have to do it if you want sonar, because you have five and six already being used for two of the motors. And personally, I would say that if you intend to add any additional uh, things like GPS, sonar, LED lights, or whatever to your NASI 32, absolutely invest in uh, PPM or something else that only uses one cable because if you're using PWM you run out of pins really quickly. So we're going to wire it up like this. We're going to plug in echo into pin 8 and trigger into pin 7. What I am going to have to do though is get the soldering iron out and solder in the middle of those lines two little one kilo ohm resistors. Um, just uh, Unfortunately that's just the way it works. And these are used to drop the 5 volts down to 3.3 volts so the board is happy. Without these, it won't work. So let's go to the bench in real life and actually plug my sonar module into the NASI 32. And then we'll jump into Clean Fight Configurator and we'll set her up. Okay, so here's the sonar installed. So what we have, we have the plus 5 volts on the ground. Those are plugged into... Um, one of the spare outputs for the motors for the ESCs at the top and then we have the middle two wires which are echo and trigger. Echo which is the blue wire is going into pin 8, trigger is going into pin 7 and you can see underneath this blue heat shrink those are the 1k resistors that we were just looking at. So next thing to do plug it into the laptop, fire up clean flight enable sonar mode and then just double check that we can see this board working okay. So now we have everything configured. Here is the sonar module uh, connected to the NAS that we've just done, connected to the PC. We're actually going to um, look at clean flight. And uh, here it is. Now the first thing we have to do is to enable sonar as a feature on the board. And the easiest way to do it is go into the third tab configuration right the way to the bottom and here you can click sonar as the feature. Click save and reboot and the board will restart and when it does you can see that the green sonar status comes on. So if we've installed it right this should work. You'll find now in modes that you can also go down to the bottom and there is the sonar mode that you can set up. So I'll, I can set it so that in the middle range uh, the sonar is turned on. But even with the sonar turned off, let me show you the way that you can check that everything's working. Go into sensors. So now you can see that if the sonar is actually resting on the table we get one height, but if I push the sonar out so that it can see over the edge of the desk then we are seeing the additional height registered within the graph. Put that back on the table. Now what this actually means is that even though in modes we don't have sonar enabled um, as part of our explicit mode, 
sonar is still being used to figure out what the altitude of the craft is along with the barometer. So again, if I push it over the edge, we see the increase in height. I put it back on the table, that height disappears. So that's the simple way to test whether or not the sonar is working. Again, for me, it's one of those that um, is an interesting one to play with. If you do a lot of flying over car parks, it's one you might have a try. But to be honest, I would probably spend my time and effort putting things like GPS and the LED lights on. But hopefully that's interesting for those of you that wanted to see it. So in this video, we talked about what sonar is, how it works, how you connect it to the machine, and then finally, how you test it's all working before you strap it to the bottom of the craft, pointing directly down, and try it out for real over a concrete surface. So thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and happy flying.